The world, before the creation of heaven and earth, was swallowed up by the ocean, and there was an island that was blessed and ruled by a certain goddess. This goddess, many called Santanar, and everything on this island was supposed to be beautiful and fit the expression beautiful view. And so every night on the island, luxury and idle life shine like stars in the dark night sky. However, even in such a beautiful place, there are plenty of various dregs of society that spoil life. These people are mostly found in the slums, which many people also call Kimura. It is always dark in this place. The sun hardly shines there, especially at night. Then one night some scoundrels came around the poor fellow, who was shaking with fear. They told him not to even think of running away, for they knew all about him. However, an older man who was dressed in tattered clothes came closer to the boy and said that Abel, after all, is not mine, so he could talk. He grabbed the poor boy by his shirt and started pulling him up. He immediately started screaming, telling them not to dare to touch him, and fought back at the same time. The men, when they heard this, immediately started laughing, because when they heard his squeaky voice, they immediately realized that the little guy was really a girl. Well, then they took a closer look at poor Abel and said that if you think about it, her face was not so good, but her body was much better. The guy covered his shirt with his hands and started fighting off these rascals, telling them not to even dare to come near him. He grabbed a bottle lying on the floor and smashed it against the wall. It became very sharp, so Abel began to threaten the rascals, saying that if they came any closer, they would be finished. However, the men only began to taunt him, and one of them went on the attack, knocking the bottle out of his hands and slamming his back against the wall. The elderly man was very angry and started yelling at him, saying that he flew him in because he was an orphan. However, he did not understand where his kindness and gratitude for this opportunity had gone. Abel began to scream loudly in pain, for the man was pressing him hard against his back, but the boy couldn't do anything about it, and the man kept yelling saying that he was barely making ends meet doing shoeshine work, and he just felt sorry for him, so he wanted to let him go. But now he didn't think it was the right thing to do. The man punched poor Abel in the face with his fist, so that he immediately got a bruise. But then he looked him sternly in the eye and said he would give him a week, and if the guy doesn't pay all the money he owes him before then, he will start working not with shoes but with men, because in fact this girl is only pretending to be a guy in order not to be abused on her body. After a few days, the girl went with a new job in Saren Square, where she wiped the shoes of nobles in order to somehow earn a living, but she didn't know what to do. She had only two days left to pay her debt to that man. This girl needed to get a lot of money incredibly urgently, and if the brothel was inevitable, because she couldn't get that much money in such a short time, she would rather die. The noble man whom this girl was shining shoes for was reading a newspaper and said he'd rather die. Then he turned to his partner and said he was talking about Lucretia. He would rather die than walk down the aisle with her. The girl, hearing their conversation, looked up at once, for the voice seemed very familiar, and when she saw the face of the man who had been hiding behind the newspaper all this time, she could not believe her eyes, for it was Caesar Bonaparte. In fact, this Caesar Bonaparte is the brightest star among the nobility of Santar, and the protagonist of many rumors. And so he finally met his fate. It is about the girl Lucrezia della Valle. She was the youngest daughter of the same della Valle. Lucretia agreed that a so-called prenuptial agreement had been made between the two families in the past. The only successor to the Bonaparte family was the center of public attention, and all because of this incident. The world aristocracy congratulates Lucretia on winning the heart of her longtime love, and Caesar is all very much annoyed, because about this news even write all sorts of nonsense in the newspapers. He tossed the newspaper aside and, taking his cigar, said that they had no idea what kind of woman this even was. The girl who was shining his shoes was still looking straight into his face, and realized that her eyes could not deceive her, for this is definitely Caesar Bonaparte. In fact, she couldn't even think or dream that she would be able to meet him in this place, but she didn't know what to do, so she thought that she could ask him for help, and he would take pity and give her some gold coins. At this point, Caesar lit his large cigar and after taking a few exhalations told his friend that just as he thought, they needed to stick to the plan. When the man sitting next to him heard this, 
he asked if he was serious about carrying out that crazy plan. Caesar looked at him unhappily and asked if he had any better offer. If he did, he was ready to hear it. However, the boy answered nothing, and the man said they needed to find a normal girl to sell to the Della Valle family. Abel, when she heard this, lit up with joy. She thought it might be the chance of a lifetime, and she supposed that perhaps the goddess herself had given it to her. So the girl stopped cleaning Caesar's shoes, and looking him straight in the face, asked that they sell them. She also said in a self-assured voice that she could become the dearest lady of Santarac. When the man heard this, he looked at her in surprise and could not believe that she was really saying this. Ah, his friend, who was sitting next to him, looked indignantly at Abel and asked what she was even saying. Caesar asked him to be quiet, because he could figure it out for himself. And then smiling, he asked if shoe shiners didn't know about anything but their shoes. And then he told the girl he wasn't a pimp. The girl then raised her voice and asked him to believe her, for her name was Abel. She said her male name, but then said that she was Adele Vivi to be precise. She was willing to even beg Caesar and said she wanted to tell him that she could handle any errand better than anyone else in this world. Caesar was surprised at this reaction from the girl, but then calmly inquired if she even knew what he wanted. Adele then said he needed a girl he would give to the Della Valle family so he wouldn't have to marry Lucrezia. The man wondered how she knew all this. The girl replied that she had read it in the newspaper and made a similar assumption. She said that the marriage contract between Della Valle and Bonaparte only specified last names, but not who was destined to enter the marriage after all and Caesar decided that if he bought the girl, he would dress her up as the daughter of Bonaparte's family. He could free himself from the obligation of a marriage of convenience. It is the girl that he needs, since in addition to Lucrezia, the Della Valle family also has a son who is still unmarried. When Caesar's assistant heard this, he was outright very surprised, and said that he couldn't believe that she had found out about everything, just by reading a few lines in the newspaper. The man himself was very serious and asked his friend Jude to stop saying it, for it was all a waste of time and there was no point in it. Caesar told the girl that the Della Valle family had been respected for many years, and this was no place to dump a man who had done nothing but shine shoes his entire life. However, Adele said in a confident voice that he would definitely not regret making this decision. It sounded a little unusual, though, because she said it in another language. When Caesar heard this, he asked in surprise if she really spoke Melon. The girl said that yes, she could speak it, and that she also knew Algian. And Jute, who was sitting beside them and watching all this, was very pleased, for he realized that Caesar was interested in this girl. And the man, in turn, inquired where she had learned all these languages. Adele said she used to read books in the city library or just memorize what others said. It all depended on the situation. When she didn't have the opportunity to go to the library, she would often pass people by and hone her skills. Caesar then sighed heavily and said with a smile that he couldn't believe it, and added that apparently this goddess was mocking him. The girl was about to object, but he suddenly became very serious and asked what he should do with this lady, Adele Vivi. But he also said after a bit of thought, that no matter how smart she was, when you're selling something, it's important that the product looks really good because otherwise no one will buy it. At this point, he pushed her with his shoe into his shoulder and stood up from the bench and said that was why she wasn't right for him. Adele remained sitting in the same spot, her gaze lowered, for she realized that her chance was slipping away and the men had just started to leave. After pondering for a while, the girl decided that she had to grab on after all, so she asked the men to wait. She began to quickly remove her makeup, which she had done specifically to avoid being hit on. Adele also peeled off a few pieces of dried skin, and taking off her hat revealed her true face, which was of incredible beauty. The men who were watching all this were incredibly surprised, and she in turn wondered if it still didn't fit. Caesar started to move closer to her, while Jute for his part stayed put, and said that finding a girl to pretend to be his little sister, he thought it was complete nonsense. However, if you look closely at Adele now, the color of their eyes and hair are very similar. Then he turned to Caesar and asked if he was sure she wouldn't be right for the role. The man was silent for a while. Then he asked the girl if she and the family were aristocrats. Adele replied that she was not, as Caesar insisted and asked who her parents were. 
The girl asked if he meant her adoptive parents or her birth parents, because if she meant her birth parents, she hardly knew anything. The man hearing this thought about it and said that it was very interesting. In that case, then he said that if she was caught lying one day, she might even be executed. He added that she was not so stupid as not to realize this, so he asked her why she was doing all this. Adele thought for a while about what to say to him. Then she said in a sad voice that she was just very hungry. Even though she was incredibly beautiful, her clothes were still torn and dirty. Caesar examined her with his gaze for a while, but then turned around and started to walk away, saying that so-and-so was okay with it. With a glimpse in Adele's direction, he said he would authorize and send her there. They spoke in a different language so he could make sure she knew him really well. The girl knew him very well and spoke even without an accent. So she offered to meet again where they aspired to be. Caesar smiled when he heard this and thought about the fact that this girl could even quote passages from Durante's play. He was pleased with his choice, for he had found a sensible girl who would not let him down. So he asked her to come to his house the next morning. When Adele finished her workday, she went back to the small room she lived in and quickly gathered all of her things. It wasn't much, but it made a bag. It was raining heavily outside the window, and the girl, sitting on the floor, still could not believe that Caesar Bonaparte himself had accepted her proposal. Now she could live in peace and not worry about ending up in a brothel if the debt wasn't paid. The girl reapplied her makeup so that she would not be molested. What upset her most, however, was that she never had anything to say to Larissa, her childhood friend. Adele looked at the letter she had written for Larissa and thought about the fact that she was probably busy this day as well. So she would at least leave her a farewell letter so she wouldn't have to leave like this, disappearing. But suddenly she heard someone knocking on the door. She was frightened, not understanding who could have come at such a late hour. But at that moment she heard someone's indignant talking and realized who it was. It was the man she was living with. He rudely opened the door and seeing the bag next to Adele, said he knew this would happen. The man came closer and closer to her, clenched his hand into a fist, said he kept wondering what would happen if she didn't pay his debt and just ran away. Just like that. He was close enough so he grabbed Adele's arm and told her to get up and follow him. All this time he was calling her various insults. The girl started to fight back because she didn't want all this and asked him to let her go already. She even hit him in the face, which made the man lose his guard. At this point, Adele was able to escape to the other side of the room where her emergency exit was located. The man angrily asked her to come back immediately, because he wasn't finished yet. But when he saw the girl trying to escape, he asked her where she was going. Adele, at that moment, jumped into that crevice and saw his hand reaching for hers. It almost reached her shoulder. But at that moment, she remembered Caesar's words asking why she needed all this. He knew the girl was well aware of all the risks she was taking, and he didn't understand why she was ruining her life. Adele didn't really ruin her because even if death awaits her there, it doesn't matter at all. She just wants to escape from this horrible place. Soon afterward, Adele found herself lying in the rain on a wet and cold street. She thought about how she would even put anything on the line to avoid staying another minute in this filthy place. The girl quickly came to her senses and started running as far away from this brothel as possible. Her makeup was smudged and she had lost her hat. Adele was ready to do anything, even put her own life at risk. Soon afterward, the girl arrived at the Bonaparte estate. She was met there by the butler. He bowed and said that they were expected and introduced himself, that his name was Ernest, and he was the butler of the family. It was still raining heavily outside and the man led her into the manor grounds, saying that the Lord was already waiting for her. Adele walked slowly into the manor and soon found his office. The man was sitting at his large desk, rifling through some papers, and he didn't notice her right away. But when he looked up, he saw that he was not alone. Caesar looked at her from head to toe and said, That's just awful. The man inquired putting the papers aside as to why his dear little sister was at his place and even in such a state. Since it was already night, the man sat in his robe and, smiling, asked that she tell everything that had happened to her brother. Adele was silent for a while. She was trying to think of the right way to say all this. After a while, in a quiet and sad voice, she said that there was a man named Nino in the slums of Kimura who ran a shoeshine business. The water that was left on her clothes from the rain dripped off her 
and the girl said he was after her because she hadn't paid him for protection and was sure Nino would keep looking for her until he got his way. Caesar, hearing this, said that since it was about that old man he was already dead. When the girl heard this, she was incredibly surprised, but he decided to change the subject, and looking out the window, said that on this day it was raining as if from a bucket, and it was so hard that even one of the huts in Camorra had just collapsed. He also said that people often die due to accidental circumstances, and it is quite common, especially in such heavy rain. He then shifted his gaze to the girl and wondered if anything else was bothering her. Adele was still surprised that he actually did it, but said that no, nothing else bothered her. For a while they were just silent, looking at each other, but afterwards Caesar said it was good. However, the girl still didn't trust, and she had a feeling that he would know something about Clarice. But at that moment, Caesar smiled and told her not to worry, for she had nothing to worry about if she acted clearly according to the plan. She only nodded in response. Then the man put his hands together and said that, once the formalities were settled, they could get down to business. Caesar said she knew her purpose perfectly well. She needed to seduce and marry the son of the Della Valle family. Her body, mind, speech, the tips of her fingers and toes, everything must be perfect. She must be the true Bonaparte. And in doing so, she has to fool the whole of society into actually believing the story. She has to believe she's his sister, too. Caesar lit his cigar and said that the preparation time for all this was only three months. And if she didn't get his recognition, their treaty would simply be destroyed. The girl, as she watched him throw away the match, thought of the fact that the destruction not only applied to the treaty, but it would apply to herself as well. Adele replied in a cold voice that she understood and would do her best. But that man suddenly came closer to her and asked if she wasn't interested in finding out why the contract period was exactly three months. The girl asked if she remembered correctly that it was his birthday in that time frame. The man said it was correct. He stood beside her and said that he couldn't even believe that a girl could so easily learn about everything from mere newspaper articles. Caesar looked at her suspiciously and said that he thought she knew even more about his family than he did himself. Then he took her by the chin and pulled her head up so that she was looking at him. Then he said, in a quiet voice, that maybe there was one reason why she knew so much after all. And then with a smile on his face, Caesar wondered if she was really interested in him and was learning so much information because of it. Adele didn't say anything to that, she just stood there looking at him. But then suddenly the man said that he could actually understand it. For suddenly such a slumdog slut has a savior who is ready to become her own brother. He ran his finger down her cheek, gently tickling her cold skin, and said that he understood perfectly well that it was hard to turn down such a wonderful chance. However, Caesar decided to warn her beforehand, just so she wouldn't come to his bedroom in the middle of the night. The man moved closer and closer to her face, but Adele thanked him for the opportunity, but said she wasn't interested in him. Of course, he was very even handsome, however completely evil, as the girl thought. She was very tense and even afraid to look him in the eye. To this, Caesar laughed at this point and told her to make a simpler face, for he was telling her this as it had happened to him before and meant nothing bad. He turned away from her, and Adele said she understood, calling him master. But the man turned and asked that she not address him so formally and just call him brother. She agreed and said she would call him brother from now on. The man went back to his desk and continued smoking his cigar. He said it was correct, and from this day forward she is now Adelaide Bonaparte, who is five years younger than he is. He began to tell her the story of their fictitious life, said that the girl lived in Capolo, far across the sea, thinking herself a commoner. She had come to Santanar Island for a specific reason. The girl realized at this point that since he was explaining all this to her, Depending on the situation, she would have to explain how she had become part of the Bonaparte family, since they had never even heard of anyone before. Then she inquired whether the chairman was also involved in his plan. In fact, Caesar's grandmother is the chairman of the Signoria. The Signoria is the parliament, and that woman was Eva Bonaparte. Without her consent, this whole plan would probably never have even been started. The man was silent for a while. Apparently, the subject was not very pleasant to him, but. Then he said that, unfortunately, no. He continued to smoke and said that Mrs. Ava really wanted great-grandchildren, 
so she would welcome Lucretia with open arms and would not object to their wedding. When Adele heard this, it was now clear to her that the chairman supported Caesar's marriage and would definitely not approve of the plan. The man suddenly inquired if there was anything else she wanted to know, but not waiting for an answer, said that he thought she had not asked. But even about the most important thing, the girl looked at him in surprise and asked him what was the most important thing. The man looked at her contemptuously and said that she asked nothing at all about his parents. Caesar said that since she was going to pretend to be his sister, she should know absolutely everything about them, and he wondered why she didn't ask about them in that case. In fact, Adele hasn't really asked anything about her parents, because she doesn't think there's a single person who isn't already aware of all these rumors. Caesar's parents were glowing with love for each other, so they ran away, abandoning their families and even their own child. Then the girl, head down, said that she had heard that when he turned seven, his parents had moved away, leaving him alone. Caesar continued to smoke and suddenly smiled contentedly, saying that he wanted to save her the trouble of explaining everything. So he, getting up from the couch, said she would just tell everyone that under the influence of another bout of madness, they had given birth to her, and that would be the end of their conversation. He went to the exit and opening the door for her, told her that a servant was waiting for her there, so she should follow her and the servant would take her to the room where the girl would now live. Before leaving, Caesar smiled and said that he would like her to look more feminine the next time he saw her, so he was looking forward to seeing her change. For a while, the girl just stared at him. After that, she said she would do her best for her brother. When the girl walked out the door, she was immediately met by a servant girl. Her name was Ephany Corell, and she said that it was a great part of her to serve Lady Adelaide. Soon the maid led Adele into a large and very spacious room, telling her that from now on she would live in this place. She also said that the estate was not too extravagant, so she would feel comfortable. Ephany looked around and said that it was rather plain for a lady's room, but she thought it would be fine for her. Adele was very surprised when the maid said it was easy, for to her it was the greatest luxury. But she told the girl not to hesitate to speak up if she was suddenly worried about something. The girl said that she would definitely, if anything, refer to Ifani. She also added that from the next day they would start etiquette training. Then the maid looked her over from head to toe and said that the girl was all wet and it was not good to catch cold on the first day. So she held out her hand and asked her to take off her wet clothes and give them to her. She turned to the side and pointed toward the hot and fragrant bathtub, saying she should take it. Adele was very much surprised. But then, in a trembling voice, she told the maid that she could wash herself. There was no need for help. The maid looked completely calm and said that aristocrats never wash themselves. And it was also part of the training, so she should follow her instructions and not cross her. The girl was about to object, but the maid interrupted her and said that what she was telling her was not a request, so she should do it. Adele started to take off her wet clothes, but she was uncomfortable but she said she would comply. The maid in turn thanked her for her understanding. When she took off all her clothes, the maid was incredibly frightened. She looked at Adele's mangled body and couldn't believe her eyes. The girl was afraid that she would be kicked out because of this, so she covered her body with her hands. She said that the bruises would soon go away. She was just constantly beaten, but the injuries never remained. They disappeared immediately. However, Ifani only silently continued to look at the girl's body, finding more and more bruises on it. Adela wondered in a quiet voice if she was going to look at her like that, and thought about the fact that Caesar might even break his contract with her because her body was all abrasions. The maid was silent for a while, but afterwards said that her contract with Mr. Caesar was valid until she married Della Valle's son. She sighed heavily and also told the girl to try to stay out of Mr. Caesar's sight until then. Adela thanked her and was very glad she wasn't going to be kicked out because of all those bruises. After all, it wasn't her fault. Ephany turned her back to her and began to walk over to the tub to fill it with various detergents. She said her bruises would go away. However, the girl was still too thin. The maid threw a few rose petals into the water and said that she needed to focus on restoring her body since she was now Lady Bonaparte. Adela went to the bathroom to give her body a good wash. After that, she was ready for bed. The maid, after she had performed all her duties, went to Mr. Caesar, who continued to sit in his study. 
and inquired how everything had gone and how his dear sister was. Afani said her health leaves a lot to be desired, with many different marks on her body from beatings. When the man heard this, he was very surprised and even upset, because she would cost much cheaper with Suvecia. The maid, hearing this, said that she would heal early, and if she was treated and cared for, she would gain a little weight and become a real beauty. Caesar sighed heavily at her suggestion, but then, remembering the look on her face, said that even with all that, she looked pretty good. After a long silence, he said it was even too bad she was his little sister, and laughed out loud, thinking about what might have been if she wasn't. The maid became very indignant when she heard this and told the master to stop these dirty thoughts, but Caesar in turn smiled and said that he wasn't going to touch her, so she didn't have to worry about it. Then summarizing, he said that in any case, once the marriage problem was solved, she would die anyway. Adele didn't sleep very long, for by habit she woke up very early, before the sun had even risen. The girl went to the window, which had a very beautiful view of the ocean, and saw the ships that were returning to the harbor after their night outing. In fact, they always came back even before sunrise at this time, after their fishing trip. And after a while, the fishermen would be unloading the catch that they had never been able to sell. The girl woke up early every day and wandered around the harbor, hoping to catch a single fish for herself. And now she looked around still couldn't believe the luxurious life that had replaced it. Adele wasn't sure if she could handle it all. The girl walked over to the small table where the book was lying, and taking it, thought about the fact that she would not be able to fall asleep again. So she needed something to occupy herself. Adele lay in her bed reading a book until morning. When the sun came up, the maid came in and was surprised to see her awake. Then Afania wondered, was she uncomfortable in bed because of that she must have woken up so early? Adele, tearing herself away from her book, said not at all. On the contrary, she was just used to waking up early. When the maid came closer to her, the girl put the book aside and inquired what she was to do that day. The maid said in a subdued tone that she was pleased to know that she was enthusiastic and willing to work. She also said that the girl will be very busy from this day onwards, and she needs to start by eating breakfast to build up her strength and energy. When the maid led Adele to the dining room, the girl stopped in surprise, for there were incredibly many different delicious and flavorful foods on the table. Ifani pushed aside the one next to her and told the girl to take a seat and asked if she had any food preferences. The girl sitting down at the table said that she didn't quite like the taste of spoiled food. She could eat anything, even insects. The maid who was standing next to her said that apparently the girl was not a fastidious person and that was a very good quality for a lady. When she turned to the lady and also said that table manners are an integral part of learning, the foundation of the basics, so to speak. Effany motioned for mistress to start using the cutlery around the edges. She already had a plate in front of her that was filled with various foods. She asked that the girl should also keep her back straight at all times and her head up. Her elbows should not rest on the table in any way, and she should not put her hands down while eating. For this shows her disrespect and uneducated. Adele immediately began to repeat everything just as the maid had told her, and began to cut a piece off the meat to taste it. Stephanie, watching her, said she was doing very well. Well, now you can taste the food already, she added. When the girl took a piece of this incredibly tasty meat in her mouth, her face turned red from the pleasure. She had never eaten anything like it before. There were many different dishes on the table. At the moment, the girl was eating beef carpaccio with arugula and celery. But there was also linguine with mackerel and abalone, halibut wrapped in potatoes with tomato sauce. Adele managed to taste all these incredibly delicious dishes, and she had never eaten anything like this before. The girl was even ready to lick the leftover sauces off the plates. But then suddenly, as she finished the last bites of food, she wondered if she had eaten it all greedily, for surely it was not proper for a lady to do so. The maid waved her head at this point and said that she was actually pleased to see her enjoying the food. And at this point, she recommends that mistress eat at least four meals a day, as she needs to put on a little weight, as she has been starving all this time. But in fact, Adele was very much okay with this recommendation, because she would be able to enjoy this wonderful food so many times a day. When the girl finished her meal, she went with the maid to the other side of the manor. The maid said she would give her a tour of the manor so she would know where to go if she needed to go. 
Soon they came to a rather spacious office, which turned out to be a library. Next to it was a meeting room, as well as a gallery. Afterward, the maid showed her the billiard room, the refectory, and more. Their grounds were so vast that they walked around the estate until the evening. They soon crossed the street, and as they strolled through the garden, the maid said that in the central part of the first floor was Mr. Caesar's study. If she needed to go to him, she must enter without knocking, for that was the rule of the manor. Adele then inquired if there was anything else she needed to be careful with. The maid thought for a moment about what to say to that. After thinking about it, the worker said it was better to tell her about one thing right now than for her to find out about it herself later. And Afani said that only six people, including herself, knew about the master contract. A few days later, another person learns of this arrangement, which is Mrs. Fravia, who will instruct her in the manners of a lady. The maid said that she is a very strict woman, but she's the best at what she does. So Adele should try to listen to her very carefully and learn everything she says. The girl replied that she would try to do absolutely everything that would depend on her. Then she asked how she should greet this Mrs. Frauia. Afani thought for a while and then said that she needed to learn the format greeting. Then she began to show the girl that she needed to grab her skirt, keep her back straight, and bend her knees slightly. The girl must then lower her head as a sign of greeting to the person to whom she is curtsying. Adele immediately began to follow the maid and asked if she was doing it correctly. When the maid saw this beautiful curtsy from Adele, she was very surprised and said it was just adorable, and she is an incredibly fast learner, which is even to their advantage. When night came, Adele was ready for sleep and was lying in her bed. The maid bid her farewell, saying she had done a fine job and wishing that her sleep would be guarded by the sea goddess. The girl smiled and wished her the same. After that, the maid walked out the door, leaving Adele completely alone. For a while, she just lay there, staring at the ceiling. Then she noticed that the silence was so strange to her. She closed her eyes and tried to sleep, thinking about the fact that the noise that was a daily occurrence in the neighborhood was completely inaudible in this place, and it even surprised her, because she wasn't used to such a quiet space. It even made tears start to flow down her cheeks. In fact, Adele didn't know that the world could be so peaceful and beautiful. The girl had never thought that in her entire life she would be able to eat warm food and fall asleep in complete silence, in a soft bed. It seemed unimaginable to her. Adele soon fell asleep very quickly and plunged into the ocean of her various dreams, but then suddenly after a while she began to hear someone's screams. The girl tried to understand what was happening and decided to go to the sound. However, she could not find anything and soon opened her eyes, realizing that it was not in her dream, but in reality. When Adele opened her eyes, she saw an alarmed Afani running into her room, trying to wake up her mistress and telling her that there had been a disaster and she needed to get up as soon as possible. She explained that Mrs. Fravia had suddenly appeared at the manor, so she needed to pack as soon as possible to meet her. The maid came over to her and gave her a robe telling her that they couldn't waste another minute, so she needed to get ready as soon as possible. Adele, who was still immersed a bit in her sleep, didn't realize that such a commotion was going on, and she hadn't been able to react and act so quickly since morning. However, at that moment, their door to the room opened abruptly and they immediately turned to look there. When the girls turned around, they saw the lady herself in the doorway, who was supposed to be teaching Adele. In fact, the venerable family that served the Bonapartes for generations was the Loradan family, and one of them, namely Arabia, managed to make a name for herself in secular circles with her own work. Firstly, she was famous for her incredible beauty and elegance, and secondly, everyone knew her for her fiery temper and with what cruelty she punished the poor young ladies who studied under her. At that moment, Fravia came into the room and struck her stick against the floor and started screaming, turning to Adele and saying that this was just shameless. The woman was incredibly angry and asked what the hell was going on. Adele was surprised by this reaction, but she bowed and apologized. She wanted to say what had happened, but she didn't have time. The lady interrupted her and still shouting, asked if she had told her to answer. Then turning as if to herself, she asked, does she really need to train this one? By which she meant, of course, Adele. The woman was incredibly annoyed and said that this girl had absolutely no manners whatsoever, and it was just awful. In fact, Adele was even starting to get worried already. 
because she didn't know what to do and thought that she should probably just stand there and wait for someone to do something. However, at that moment, a man also came into their room, and he stood at the threshold and told the lady that he would not have called her if this girl had manners. That man was Caesar, of course, and he turned to Mrs. Fravia with a smile on his face, saying that he had not expected to see her so early. Fravia immediately turned around and started to walk closer to him. The girl wanted to say something to Mr. Caesar, but she didn't have time. He stepped closer to her and kissed her cheek and told her that he wanted to start by greeting her properly. The lady was very surprised at this behavior of his and was not pleased, but when he finished his welcoming kiss, smiled, and asked if she had slept well that night. The lady was very surprised, but said that yes, and even slept well. Caesar continued to smile and said that was great, and asked if she would join him for lunch, as he would be insanely happy to have her company, of course, if she could find the time to do so. Mrs. Fravia was able to contain her emotions and said that of course she would always make time for Mr. Caesar. The man smiled and said it was wonderful. For a while, the guest stared at his face and couldn't look away, even embarrassed by how beautiful his eyes were. But after that she lowered her gaze, realizing that she could not go on like this, and said that Mr. Caesar was very cunning. He winked at his guest, asking if that wasn't what girls liked about him. The man then turned his gaze to Adele who stood behind him and didn't understand what was going on. Then, with a smile on his face, he asked if they had any morning water treatments planned, and without waiting for their answer, he said that apparently he really should have come back later. When Mrs. Fravia heard this, she was indignant, and asked what it was he was even saying, and wondered, pointing in Adele's direction, that if she heard him, then she would also dream of strange things. The girl herself turned away so as not to see their annoyed faces and thought that it would be very nice if someone would take her side at all. Caesar continued to speak with a smile on his face, said that she had the face of a person who would definitely not do that, because it would hurt his pride. When Fravia heard this, she got even more angry. She started to get closer to Adele and asked her how she could even dare to question her like that. She was already so close that she could see the smallest of spots on Adele's face. But then she started to pull down the sleeve of the girl's robe and saw the very large bruises on her shoulder. The woman became angry and in a stern voice inquired what these vile mutilations of hers were in the first place. Adele became even more uncomfortable, and she lowered her head and began to put the robe back on herself, saying that it was no big deal because the abrasions would go away very soon and there would be nothing left. Caesar became suddenly very serious and silently observed the situation. Adele said it wouldn't interfere with his plans, but Mrs. Fravia was furious. She turned to the gentleman and said that this girl was definitely not suitable for him because it was unclear where she had been carried. The woman said that the Temeraire creatures must have beaten this girl when she sold her body for money. She called her a fallen girl and very lazy. Fravia kept shouting and said that even if she was given a hundred years, she would still never be able to come close to becoming an aristocrat, let alone his lofty plans. The woman also said that it's pretty obvious that the lad used her body to enhance her status in society, and that's why she has so many bruises all over her body. At this point, Adele began to reminisce about living with Nino and how he and his cronies beat her up all the time. There was a case where one of the men lost money, and she was just watching him play. The man got angry about the whole situation, swung around, and said that he had lost, but that didn't give her the right to look down on him. She was also often beaten up by the customers she shined shoes for. They must have had a bad day, and because of that they took their anger out on her. Not a day went by that she didn't get hit by people. Adele squeezed her robe harder at this point and apologized to Mistress. She said she was certainly not perfect, but she would try her best. Fravia, hearing this, asked if she really thought she was capable of kicking those who had spent all their time in the upper classes since birth with just some effort. She said that Adele was overconfident, and it was so strange to hear it from someone who had lived in poverty all her life. Adele listened to all this in silence. Then she said in a calm voice that of course she couldn't be sure that she would succeed. After all, she had no parents and had never been trained. However, if her brother wasn't so sure of her, he wouldn't have brought her to him. Mistress was already about to say something. However, 
Adele continued talking and said that if she thought they had a problem, why didn't she discuss the matter with her brother? Then the girl realized that she had done a little bit of spinning and lowered her head and apologized for being ignorant and rude. But she was also understandable, for there was no one to teach her all this time. Fravia was so angry that she could even hit her right at that moment with the stick she was holding. But then suddenly Caesar, who was still watching, coughed, attracting their attention. Mistress had to calm down a bit, so she turned away from the girl and began to breathe quickly, in order to bring her emotions back to normal. After that, the teacher said that she had completely forgotten that she still had an appointment. So she turned to Mr. Caesar and said that she would probably go now. After that, she quickly ran out of the room while trying to contain her anger. The man, after giving her a glance, turned to Adele and smiled gently, saying that his little sister was good after all. The girl, adjusting her robe, thanked him, while she herself hoped very much that he did not see the terrible bruises that were on her body. Then the man remembered what he wanted to say to her, and turning to her, he said that his new sister was not one to sag easily, and because of that, Mrs. Fravia must be in for a rough time. But he then suddenly laughed, and said that it would actually be much easier for the girl if she didn't get too stubborn. And the lady was actually more sympathetic than she seemed at first glance. Adele, when she heard this, was very indignant. Then she wondered if he really wanted her to pretend to be pathetic in front of her. The man then wondered if she really wanted to pretend, and asked if she wasn't already. Caesar started to get closer to her and said that she had lived poor all her life, and everything that was happening now seemed very strange to her, even if it was a game. The man was absolutely sure that she knew how to choose the right behavioral pattern for any given situation. He leaned over to watch her reaction, and when he was right in front of her eyes, he asked if he was right. Adele was well aware that this was just a provocation on his part to see how she would react in this situation. The girl managed to figure it out in time, so she bowed before the Lord and apologized. She, without raising her head, also said that she would do her best to live up to his expectations. In fact, Adele certainly doesn't want to become entertainment for him, so she needs to proceed very carefully. At this point, Caesar turned away, and as he walked towards the exit, he said that everyone was becoming very boring and it was even annoying him. The next day, Adele was already expecting new assignments and lessons. When she found along the corridor with her maid, she asked her if indeed Mrs. Fravia was coming to tutor her. Efani, opening the doors to the room, which had many different sculptures, told the lady not to worry. Inside, the girl's future teacher was already waiting for them, and the maid said that she would do whatever Mr. Caesar told her to do. At that moment, they saw the displeased face of Fravia, who was clearly not happy about these activities. Then the woman turned to Adele and told her to stop using the last name Bonaparte, as it was not a last name that could be borne by a scamp like her. The woman pointed in her direction with a pointer and said that she had a large blue star emblazoned on her chest and the sea goddess might fly into a rage. However, Mr. Caesar has asked that she make Adela a lady, but the woman still thinks it will take a slightly different method of teaching than the one she always teaches. And so Mrs. Fravia turned to the girl in a cold voice and told her to kneel down, and further, upon hearing this, directly panicked and questioned if she really wanted to do so. The teacher in a stern voice inquired, is she already deaf, and then repeated her request for her to kneel right now. The girl could not understand why the teacher was so angry with her. Is this mistress punishing her for not being an aristocrat, or for being a dirty and shoeshine Adele had no way of knowing why this mistress wanted to hurt her so badly? However, the girl had to achieve her goal, so even this old lady would not prevent her from working as a shoe shiner. She had been on her knees all her life, so it was not a problem for her. So Adele quickly kneeled down at the teacher's order. Fravia looked sternly at the girl for a while, but after that she came closer to her and asked that she listen to her carefully and memorize once and for all. At this point she placed her foot on the girl's high-heeled ankle and said that she was an item to be sold to the Delavale family. The teacher pressed her foot more and more each time and even started twisting it from side to side, saying that if she did anything, she would become shark food. Fralia pointed in her direction with a pointer and said that Adele should know her place. A then asked if the girl understood. Adele was silent for a while, but then in a quiet voice told Mistress that she understood then. The woman took her foot off her ankle and told her to get up because they had to start training. She said it all starts with her walking posture 
and that's why shoes should correct her crooked walk. At that moment, a maid brought a brand new pair of black-colored shoes into the hall. When Adele looked at them, she couldn't believe that she would actually have new shoes for her. The teacher, for her part, said that she should henceforth wear only them. Of course, this also applies to times when there are no classes. But once Adele saw those shoes, she couldn't listen to anything else. She was ecstatic. The girl took them out of the box and started to put them on her feet. But then suddenly something went wrong and she couldn't get her fingers inside. Soon Adele finally managed to buckle those shoes, but she turned to mistress, saying that those shoes were too small for her. But the girl did not have time to finish her sentence. For all, Mrs. Fralia, smiling wickedly, told her to get up quickly and start walking. She pointed toward the side at the end of the hall and told her to walk the entire distance from that spot until she told her to stop. However, as soon as Adele stood on her feet in those little shoes, she immediately couldn't keep up and fell to the floor. The teacher scolded her severely, and soon the girl, walking a few more laps around the hall like that, could not move anymore. She fell to the floor again, and because of the severe pain in her legs she could not even get up. The girl quickly took those little shoes off her feet and, tossing them aside, said she couldn't go on like this. Mistress stepped closer to her and asked in a stern voice what she was even allowing herself. Then she added that as far as she could see, the girl had no intention of learning. Fralia began to scream and said that she was unworthy to be. In that case, Bonaparte asked that the girl get out now. She smiled wickedly at that moment, thinking that this was the way she was going to chase the filthy brat away when she finally gave in. But Adele wasn't going to give up. She put those shoes back on and started walking and pacing around the gym like her teacher had instructed her to do. In fact, it was simply impossible for the girl to do it in such small shoes. However, because the teacher didn't say a word to the girl, she had to keep walking. Then Adele suddenly stopped and turned to Mistress and asked if she needed to walk again. In fact, there wasn't a bit of pain emotion on her face, only sweat because of her efforts. Fravia was very angry and thought to herself that she wasn't going to take it anymore, for she had had enough. The woman turned to the maid who had been standing with them all this time and asked if she could step outside for a moment. Ephany apologized to her mistress by bowing, but said that Mr. Caesar had ordered her not to leave Lady Adelaide's side. The teacher kept insisting and said that she would tell the gentleman that she was the one who asked her to leave the room. Fravia then also added in a cold voice that she wasn't going to punish the girl and swore on the lord and family's name. The maid had nothing else to do but believe her, so she said okay and soon left the room. When the teacher was alone together with Adele, she slowly turned to the girl and addressed the shoeshiner, saying that she wanted to tell her directly. Fravia stepped closer to her and asked that the girl not slowly leave this estate. Adele, even though she was tired, continued to assert her rights and said it was up to whoever brought her to this place, not her. But the woman, angry, said that she was actually the one having the conversation with her, and compared to the Bonaparte family. Della Valle might not even be the best candidates for marriage. However, they are definitely above having a lazy and vulgar creature like her as part of their family. The woman said that if Adele knew her place, she should just leave. The woman said that if Adele knew her place, she should just leave. So the teacher replied that Loredan's family would certainly take care of her defense. Moreover, the woman herself would pay her good money for it. Adele hesitated, and then looked at her in surprise and asked if she really wanted Mr. Caesar to marry Lucretia. Fravia was surprised to hear this, but said nothing. The girl continued speaking, saying that she had thought the woman had come to this place to do her brother's bidding. But in fact, that was apparently not the case. Adele turned to leave and apologized to her mistress, saying she had to tell her brother what had happened. Well then suddenly the woman couldn't stand it and screamed and said that it was Mrs. Eva's will. She was counting on this marriage. The relationship between the Bonaparte and Jedavale families has been established for generations, and without a marriage contract, the girl highly doubts that Mr. Caesar will ever marry. She said it's all because he has a huge number of women with whom he has a great time, and he still cannot calm down and continues to behave as if a child, and the lady considers it unacceptable that the Bonaparte family is interrupted in this way because of his passing whim. Fravia, when she told the girl all this, said in a stern voice that she hoped she understood her now. Adele bowed and thanked her mistress. 
She said that nevertheless she could not do her bidding. When the woman heard this, she got even more angry. She didn't understand why the girl couldn't just agree to all this. So she started calling her a greedy idiot and asked her if she was trying to get more money out of her. However, Adele replied in a calm voice that that was not the case at all. At that moment, she began to remember the meals she had been served for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the snack of sweets, and she just couldn't give it all up. So she said she just really liked the food at this mansion, and that's why she didn't want to leave. Fravia, when she heard this, could not believe her ears. She asked, Is the girl seriously refusing such an opportunity just because of food? Then Adele explained that money, the future, and the lane were all not for her. Not for people who survive every single day without bending over the streets to get a small piece of bread. And the promise of the future is just a mirage to them. What matters is the food on the table right here and now so they can see the result. They are just empty and silly talk. She started yelling and said that the girl is straight and bulging with her intelligence and all the time wants to prove that she is better than others. However, she is really just a hungry animal that is hungry for food. Adele didn't deny it either. She said the woman was right, and she didn't even know what it was like to live differently until that moment. She could not even sleep at night because of hunger, and once she had to survive on stale bread for a month. She lived in total uncertainty, worrying only about whether she would be able to eat that day. So she said that she had to refuse her request and then, after making a referral, she apologized. Adele insisted and said that no matter what, she would not leave Bonaparte Manor just because of her request. Soon after, their classes finally ended, and when evening came, the teacher was walking down the halls of the manor, thinking that this was all just awful. Fravia was incredibly angry at the girl and thought about how embarrassing she was. However, the woman couldn't deny her charm. Besides, she had even endured even wearing those awful little shoes. She was very annoyed by all this, and she thought it was just a misunderstanding. Then she thought that perhaps something had come between the shoeshine lady and Mr. Caesar, some spark had passed between them, and the mere thought of it made her feel sick. The woman realized that she had to find another way to get rid of this intrusive and annoying girl. A whole week of class with Mrs. Froya had passed since then. Time flew by very quickly, and Adele didn't expect things could happen so fast. She didn't even notice how the days passed. All the time she was working on her voice, her manners, the rules of socializing, the rules of addressing people of higher status, the rules of graceful refusal of courtship, and most importantly, it was, of course, the gait in those horribly small shoes, in which it was simply impossible to move around properly. And then one day, as she was strolling through the garden, and a maid was walking behind her, when she saw her gait, the woman anxiously asked if her feet were all right. Mm, Adele only replied coldly, Yes. But the maid still insisted, and said that in fact her gait was flawless, and she thought Mrs. Fravia had already noticed it. Ephany, in fact, said she never ceases to be amazed at her learning speed, as the girl grasps everything on the fly and repeats everything flawlessly the first time. Of course, she needs to put her knowledge into practice. But even now, no one would think that she was a girl from a lower class. When Adele heard that, she said that she was very pleased to hear those words. But then suddenly they were distracted by the girls who were walking nearby and giggling loudly. She turned to the maid and inquired, Who are these people? After all, this is the first time she's seen them. Ephany said they were visitors from Orkanen. Adele then inquired as to what they were doing so far from home. The maid said that the girl was so busy with her studies that she even missed all the news. Then she explained that the second prince had taken the throne of Orkanen a few days ago, and it was Mr. Caesar who had contributed greatly to that. Since His Highness had a poor chance of taking the throne, it took a lot of effort, and eventually he managed to lead the country. And in gratitude for the help of the now Emperor Orkaninus, sent his gifts to Mr. Caesar. That's why they have such a bustle in the palace lately. Lots of people bringing various gifts that the king has passed on, and a lot of guests in general. When Adele heard this, she said that apparently, by doing so, her brother had increased his influence in the community. The maid said that she was quite right, and at that moment the ladies who were strolling by suddenly saw the gentleman and turned to him in one voice. Caesar, who came closer to them, said hello and wished them good morning. 
He kept smiling as he spoke to them. As Adele watched him, she thought he was a favorite of fate and the gods, as well as a devotee of the festive life. Caesar is a man blessed by the sea goddess herself, one to whom all the above epithets fit. However, right now for some reason this man didn't look at all happy and cheerful. He was even a little gloomy. Though it sounds like nonsense, yet it was true. The maid turned to the mistress and suggested that they leave the place before they were noticed. Adele of course agreed, and they headed in the other direction, away from the ladies. At that moment, Caesar suddenly noticed them walking away from him, and kept looking in that direction. The girl who was standing nearby wondered why he kept looking that way. The man in turn said that he thought he saw a mermaid there. The girl also decided to look in that direction to see it. Pun immediately covered her face with his hand and said that there was also one such girl here, immediately laughed and said that he was such a joker. With a smile on his face, he asked, Don't you like me? And then whispered in her ear if she would come to him, for he would be waiting. The girl hesitated for some time, and afterwards told Mr. Caesar that if he would promise that his intention on her account was serious, she would certainly come. He didn't say anything in response, just smiled. In fact, it made him want to punch her in the face. And he didn't understand why she gave so much meaning to the night they'd spent together. Because it didn't mean anything at all. He ran his fingers through her golden hair, and thought about how he'd once thought it was unbelievably beautiful. However, he somehow doesn't feel the same at all right now. He wants something completely different. Caesar then turned to her with a smile on his face, calling her cutie and asking her where she got so much self-confidence in the first place. The girl, when she heard this, was very surprised and angry. She, with tears in her eyes, said that in that case she would leave, and she did not want to endure all these insults from him. To this, Caesar only smiled and wished her a careful path and started to walk away from the girls who started to support her, for she was very upset. He was getting tired of it all. He set off through the woods toward his estate, and on the way he lit a cigar. In fact, he had definitely seen Adele and her maid walking in that direction, so he decided to go after them. But then suddenly he heard someone shouting and looked over and saw that it was Adele asking to be let go. Not far from him, Adele was struggling with some man who had a dead grip on her arm. In fact, a few minutes before, Adele was walking ahead of her maid to hurry back to the manor. However, at this moment, she couldn't move anymore because an intense pain appeared in her legs, and the girl even lost her balance, falling to the floor. But Adele was able to hold on to the fountain. The maid immediately ran to her and said that this is definitely not the case, because she must check the condition of her legs, because the girl could not even walk a few meters, and fell. Ephany very quickly removed Mistress's shoes and saw all of her feet, which were sore and cut, and had many different blisters on them due to the fact that these shoes were incredibly small. When the maid saw it, she was shocked and then told her that this was not the way to do it. She could not continue to wear those little shoes. Adele, who could barely hold back her tears because of the intense pain, asked if they had anything that might allow her to relieve the pain, for she thought she could last a little longer with medication. Afani was confused. She didn't know what to do in such a situation, but then anger took over and she stood up, throwing her shoes on the floor saying that this class would be the end of it. The maid also said she would bring her a wheelchair, and in the meantime, she should put her feet in the water to relieve her tension. When the maid left, Adele immediately dipped her feet into the water, thinking about the fact that it was really helping her reduce her pain after all. Yes, eating is certainly hard. However, it is nothing compared to the life she lived in the slums. But then suddenly the girl heard some loud laughter nearby and immediately became alert. Not far away from them, were men who were laughing and talking loudly. The girl immediately turned in their direction, realizing that someone was coming and they might notice her. And seeing that they were coming closer and closer, the girl realized that she had better hide. She started to run quickly along the fountain so that they wouldn't notice her and start harassing her. One of the men told his friends that Lady Lucretia was not even in sight, and he thought she would be present as Caesar's partner.